helicopter spinning out of control and going down sounds like a nightmare. But just imagine this uncontrolled helicopter is falling into the mouth of an active, gurgling volcano. Unfortunately, this isn't a tale created by my vivid imagination, or a new episode of a disaster TV series. It's a true story that happened more than 20 years ago. As soon as Craig Hosking was tall enough to reach the pedals, his father started to teach him how to fly a helicopter. No wonder, at the age of 16, the teenager became one of the youngest licensed helicopter pilots ever. Besides, he was just as skilled in flying different kinds of airplanes, seaplanes, and gliders. Eventually, Hosking became a successful aerial photographer, who also helped to make feature films and TV series. So, when he was asked to participate in the shooting of a new big-budget movie about volcano eruptions, he readily agreed. There were two other members on this little team, freelance cameraman Michael Benson and freelance film technician Christopher Duddy. The cruise helicopter was the Bell 206B-3. Equipped with two cameras, the helicopter was supposed to do filming runs of the Kilauea volcano on the Hawaiian Islands. In particular, the filming team was interested in the Pu'u'o'o vent. Yeah, that's what it says right here, Pu'u'o'o. Although there was no active lava flow in the vent, an orange pool glowing 120 feet down in a pit on the side of the crater, as well as the associated smoke plume, was enough to provide all the excitement the filmmakers needed. It was Saturday, November 21st, 1992. Everything went as planned, until the helicopter started its third pass over the volcano. Just a couple of seconds before the crew reached the center of the crater, things went really bad really fast. First, Hosking noticed that the main rotor output started to decrease. Then, almost immediately, the rotor caution sign lit up. It seemed like the helicopter was having serious technical problems. In any other situation, such an experienced pilot as Hosking still could have flown over to the outside of the crater. But unfortunately, in this case, the walls surrounding the helicopter were so steep that such a maneuver would have led to a fatal rollover. It happened lightning fast. In his attempts to save the day, Hosking accidentally got into a cloud of volcanic steam and smoke. The pilot tried to leave it by auto-rotating the helicopter down to the bottom of the crater. He knew that if a helicopter loses all its engine power, the machine can still land safely because the air will be moving up through the rotors, and it probably would have saved their helicopter as well if the main rotor hadn't struck the crater's rock wall and separated from the airframe. After that, things went completely awry when the helicopter spun out of control and crashed inside the volcano, about 150 feet below the crater's rim. However, it must have been a lucky day for the filming crew locked inside. Not only did the helicopter narrowly avoid dipping into a hot, bubbling lava pool, but all three men survived and had no serious injuries, except for some bruises and minor cuts. But the situation was still extremely dangerous. The men were stuck inside a volcano that was emitting poisonous gases like sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. Flammable and explosive, they're fatally toxic for people. The only thing that saved the filming crew members was that they crashed in a part of the crater where fresh air was leaking inside over the rim. After choking on the noxious volcano gases for several hours, the filmmakers decided to make a run for it and started to climb up towards the crater's rim. But the interior walls crumbled so easily that every single move could cause a rock slide. Hosking returned to the helicopter and, miraculously, made the radio work by connecting it to a spare battery. After the park officials were informed of the crash, a daring fire department helicopter pilot flew inside the crater low enough for Hosking to scramble aboard. But the two other team members were in a much more dangerous situation. The problem was that they decided to continue their climb, and when the helicopter arrived, they were stuck on a high ridge about 80 feet away from the rim. Obscured by the cloud of dense gases, they had to be left behind. Duddy and Benson spent an agonizing night listening to the lava gurgling not far beneath them, breathing in toxic gases, and trying to come to terms with their fate. However, on Sunday afternoon, Duddy couldn't stand it any longer. In despair, he decided to continue the climb. Benson, 
who had found a secure 2x4-foot crevasse some 50 feet away from his companion, realized that it was too risky and chose to remain where he was. Duddy left alone. You can imagine Benson's shock when just a couple of hours later, he saw a body that careened past him and disappeared in the gurgling lava. He was sure it was Duddy who had lost his footing and plunged into the abyss. Luckily, that wasn't the case. 27 hours after the crash, at 2.30 p.m., Duddy reached the rim of the crater. He was immediately taken to the hospital, but was released one day later. As for the thing Benson had taken for his colleague's body, it was a survival package dropped by the rescue team, who hoped that it would miraculously land next to the cameraman. By Monday morning, Benson had been inside the crater for two days, without food or proper sleep, terrified and exhausted. Even worse, all the rescue attempts failed due to the heavy rain and fog that covered the volcano. Finally, at 9 a.m. on Monday, during a tiny break in the weather, helicopter pilot Tom Hopman noticed Benson before the fog closed back up almost immediately. At least now it was clear where the man was. Hauptmann lowered his helicopter into the vent and used a 150-foot rope with a net to fish the cameraman out. With no visibility whatsoever, the pilot had to rely on his senses to rescue Benson. That's why, when he felt the rope tighten, he pulled it up and there was the cameraman. Benson was taken to Hilo Hospital Intensive Care Unit in stable condition and was treated for chemical pneumonia caused by the inhalation of the toxic gases, as well as dehydration and exposure. The cause of the accident could have been the volcanic gas, which caused a partial loss of engine power. Only thanks to the pilot's skills, the filming crew members got away alive with no serious injuries. However unique, this helicopter crash wasn't the only case where people survived a fall into a volcano crater. In 2007, a group of people was exploring Old Doyinho Lenge, an active volcano in Tanzania, when a porter of the group fell into a crevice filled with lava. Amazingly, the man not only survived, but also climbed back to safety on his own. His legs and arms were burned, but he was alive. What saved him was the extraordinary cold lava of old Doyengo Lenge. Well, it's probably not what you would consider cold, but believe me, with a temperature of 950 degrees Fahrenheit, the lava was exceptionally cool. Instead of the red-orange flowing liquid that probably comes to your mind, this cold lava is black and slow-moving. That's why the man managed to throw his pack down and stand on it until he finally climbed out of the crevice. Another man fell as deep as 2,000 feet into the crater of Mount St. Helens and remained unscathed. In 2008, John Slemp, along with his son and a friend, went up to the crater's rim with their snowmobiles to enjoy the breathtaking view. At one moment, an overhanging shelf of snow under Slemp's feet broke loose and the man dropped 200 feet down. However, when he tried to climb back, the snow fell apart beneath him and he dropped another 1,500 feet down. When Slump was rescued by a helicopter team just a couple of hours later, the only injuries he suffered were a hyperextended leg and several minor cuts. Then there was the woman who, during a Mount Batur hike in Bali, suddenly fell off the platform straight into the crater. She was lucky that those around her had a lightning-fast reaction. Seeing that she landed about 130 feet below the platform, other tourists formed an arm-in-arm -arm human chain that reached the woman and pulled her out. Besides, they managed to keep her alive until the medical team arrived. Now, have I forgotten about any other people falling into volcanoes and surviving this blood-chilling experience? Actually, I think the blood would boil. Eh, let's not split hairs. No matter. If so, let me know down in the comments. If you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But hey, don't go diving into a volcano just yet. We have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. All you have to do is pick the left or right video, click on it, and enjoy. Stay on the bright side of life.